Today on Biggie Power, on this part of Project Lemon, 16 Valve, whatever you want to call it, we're switching out the old brakes for the new ones. Winning! <laughs> On the left we have uh, Peugeot's sort of stock system for going on 206s and 306s and the like. 266mm across the face of the disc, little Bosch calipers, cheap little pads. Ideal for sort of economy driving and all the rest of it and just living life with a car. But with a bit more poke you need a bit more stop. So here we come to these. These are 323mm across discs, direct fit, off the shelf which is useful. And then these calipers are XC90, Volvo XC90 calipers. We cleaned them up, give them a lick of paint to match the rears, and I'm using some braided hoses to match the rear again. We'll obviously refresh the fluid. We had once already, but I'll put flush through fluid through it. And we're using EBC Automax pads, which I've never used before. I've used their yellow stuff. I found them a bit noisy, a bit um, dusty, and not all that great cold. So we'll try these. There's a few reasons we've done this. These calipers are really easy to get hold of, they are everywhere and they are on so many different vehicles, not just XC90 calipers, I just found that when you search for XC90 calipers for these um, ATE brakes, that they're really cheap, so I got a pair of calipers in good condition for 40 quid, which I think is incredible, you pay nearly as much for them. Uh, the pads were about the same money, and the discs were about 80 quid the pair, so a pretty amazing upgrade. The bit that's cost the money is the adapter, which I'll just show you in a second. Okay, so this is where we're at. Um, we've gone through a few different uh, trial templates from uh, my brain to card to metal. Um, and the final template looks a little bit something like that. Um, it's allowing for a little cutout in the middle and it's got holes in the right places, slightly oversized. All good. Um, now we've positioned the caliper because uh, the pads are too tall, the size of disc that we can run on the Peugeot, which is uh, I think it's something like 326 mil, I think I mentioned that. Um, so I want to get the right overlap. Now, you, they were almost basically going to perfectly fit um, with all the overlap of the pad on the top. But if you look carefully, the piston runs quite close to the top of the pad. So I didn't want uneven pressure on the disc, really. Um, even though this is a massive carrier on top here that kind of evens the pressure out. It's the beauty of these, or um, well, part of the beauty of these. Um, other than many other things we've already discussed. Uh, so I wanted to just drop it down a bit so there was a little bit of overlap on the inside edge there. Uh, so that's what we've done. So what I need to do now is just send this metal template off with a few measurements so you can just double check it to Tiggy and he will get some laser cut plates, I'm hoping in 15mm steel, um, just to help with the length of bolts and app rigidity and because there's so they're so close to the holes um, I don't want to just use 8 or 10mm steel. Um, and then when they come back, we can, well, we can bolt them up to the car. Awesome! <laughs> that was so cool. Uh, in the meantime, I'll just uh, rub these down, strip them down, give them a little paint, and get some new pads on the way, which just are wonderfully cheap because they're fitted to pretty much every vehicle, <laughs> almost. Um, which I've probably made a list of them already on this video, but R32s, um, a load of Volvos, uh, a load of Fords, STs, that sort of thing. So yeah, pretty cool. So just as you may or may not have seen, um, I'm measuring up some adapters. This is the final product. Um, I first measured up that last little bit of video you just saw in October 2017, and it's now June 2018. Uh, so they've taken quite a while. I have other issues in the meantime, two engine rebuilds for instance, so they've not been too much of a bother. Uh, they have arrived. I'd love to recommend the people that made them, or the company that made them, but I'm afraid I can't. Tiggy was too busy. In the future, I'll just wait for him. Because these kind of, well, maybe you can see, if you look carefully through those holes, um, you can see lots of Dremel marks. And then some of the original marks, especially these two holes here from when it being cut. So the holes weren't true or square to the plate. Um, and as you can see, I've been dremeling away on it this morning because they don't actually fit right. So 70 quid, not that well spent, really. Most expensive part, effectively, of the whole lot. Um, so I won't recommend them because 
they also supplied those valve springs and I was hoping that they would have retribution on this but they haven't so maybe in the future maybe I'll just avoid them in future I'm afraid so um, I do appreciate Tiggy's efforts though he did kind of organize this um, initially and we were just waiting for his company to cut some and I should have just waited really should have shown my patience anyway I've been dremeling that one that one's ready to fit so let's um, strip the one side off and put these on and if you're wondering why I didn't just go with a 300 mil upgrade, which I also have on my channel, I did on my 206 once, on my wife's 206, that is also quite cheap and readily available. However, the pads are quite expensive, especially the performance pads. Performance pads for these, because they use them on Focus ST, Golfs, etc., Volvos, the performance pads are actually quite cheap to get hold of because they're readily available, um, as are parts. Um, for these calipers, as I say, the expense of these calipers. So really, th this key of these adapters, once I've done that, I'm then sort of really flexible with the calipers and pads and stuff. That's the reason. I didn't go over 300 mil. Plus, these are bigger. These are the original brakes. They are 260 mil across, 66 mil, sorry, 266 mil across. We call them 266s for that reason. Often brakes kind of Amongst Persians, at least, and Citroens are kind of rated by that distance. So that's the distance across the whole face of the disc. So GTI ones are two eight three. I ran those on the racetrack with great success with some decent pads. Um, these are stock ones, basically for phase three. Um, other than some very low spec ones, which were two four seven mil, and some early D turbos were two four seven, which were just generally dangerous. These obviously aren't up to scratch, so it's time to upgrade. Uh, obviously, as already noted. So um, I've shown you the brakes I want to put on. I'm just going to rip these off and let's test fit one of the brakes, I think. As you can see, it looks like we've got a split boot, so that will be coming apart very soon for a new boot. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to have to clean up that hub face quite dramatically. Uh, I wouldn't normally leave a brake caliper hanging like that because it does damage the brake hose. But the brake hose is coming off, so I'm just going to leave it there for now as we've not got uh, brake fluid dripping everywhere. Um, I'm going to clean up there, up there as well, and get a bit of a soak. Clean that up, test fit the brakes, and then we'll start trying to get the brake pipe apart, which could be fun! Yay! Goodbye brakes! Okay, there we have it. There's our big brakes in there. They do look rather nice, I've got to admit. They look different than what I expected. I've got more clearance than I expected, which is good because air equals cooling, uh, effectively. Um, and the colour isn't as garish as I thought because it sits back in the wheel, nice. So we've got our braided hoses tucked in behind there, OEM fit. Goes on the back of the caliper, OEM fit. Everything seems okay. So we're going to put by the other side of the there. So, we are going to put the other side together now. This side only took a couple of hours. Let's hope the other side takes less time. Well there we have it, uh, it's passenger side done now as well, uh, a few less complications on this side, we've done the caliper, although I don't know if you can really see it without a light, but uh, I basically had to put an extension in, you can not see it behind there, I had to put an extension in on the uh, brake line because it was seized on completely and the simplest thing rather than trying to cut the brake line for me, I just put a little extension on, so I've done that. So I'll bed them in now and then after a few hundred miles we will see what they're like in comparison to the old ones. I imagine they're a bit better. Yummy brakes. So, um, yeah. That's it. Job done.